Hey there everybody, my name is Alex, spelled like that, and today we're going to be going over my top 9 plugins for recording, mixing, and mastering. So let's jump right into it, but before we do, I want you to make sure that you've hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and make sure that you have your bell notifications turned on so that way you're notified every single Monday when we come out with a new video just like this. All right, without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, now for the next one, I have definitely used this in the effects for horns video. This is the bias. FX. Basically, it's a plugin that's like a guitar slash bass amp plugin. So, here is what the bass sounded like with absolutely nothing on it. Alright, not too shabby. Now, here's what it sounds like with the Bias FX2. One of the cool things that gets really popped out here is you'll hear at the beginning at, or at the end of the slide where I slide up on the bass, there's almost like this doink sound on it. And you hear it in the full mix and it sounds like an effect that I like put in or a sound that I put in, but it's actually just from me playing the bass not very well. So listen to it one more time, see if you can hear it. Let's look at the bias FX. This is what we're looking at here. You can see we have some things inactive. We have some things that are active. This is from a plug uh, preset. I'm not gonna click on it because I don't wanna lose this preset. But basically there are a ton of free presets that come with it for guitar. And there are a few that come with bass. I believe more clean is a guitar uh, setting, but sometimes it works so you you can kind of play around and, and see what sounds the best i like again using the presets and then editing those presets from within so i kept the gate i kept the 67 blackface uh version 2 i kept the, the reverb and i kept the green 25 and the cool thing about this about this plugin is that it uses simulated equipment so the 67 blackface is an actual thing the green 25 is an actual thing. These pedals, actual things in real life, but these are just the plug-in version of them. We're just gonna give a quick overview. You can see here for the gate, we have a relatively low threshold. Sensitivity is pretty much nothing, same with release. And we have it for mute, not reduction. We have this uh, 67 blackface uh, V2 here. You can see that the gain gains at, I had it at about a 9.1. We have the bass turned all the way up. The middle basically turned all the way down. Well, it's about at like five or four. We have the treble turned down pretty low too. Presence is pretty high though. And the master is somewhere in the middle. For the reverb, it's very light reverb. You can see the decay and the blend is very low, meaning the blend being like the wet or dry. And the tone is also set very low. I'm just looking for a little bit of ambiance here. That's it. Now for the green 25, the cool thing about this is for this cab, you not only get to choose the cab, you also get to choose the microphone that you're using on it. So you can see with this click down, we have four decent options. You've got the classic SM57, the MD420 or 421, the R121, which sounds amazing, and the C414, which also sounds amazing. Um, for me, I like to go closer to the center. And here you can also see the distance from the cab. So as we push it in, we're closer to the cab. As we pull it back, we're farther from the cab. So, um, and then you can choose between open back, close back. For me, again, it, you know, you can get into the tech of it, but it's also what sounds the best. And this is what sounded the best. This is the last plugin for this song, Smoke. And it's the Isotope Ozone for EQ. And I have it on the master. You can put it on basically anything, but I generally use it as my master EQ. 
The isotope stuff is all phenomenal. I'm just gonna say that. Uh, I would put them in the same category as sound toys, where I would say if you can afford to buy as many of their plugins as possible, go for it. It's not wasted money. So what I'm gonna do is I'm here at the verse. Again, beware, there will be cursing. And I'm just gonna play you the song at the verse. And uh, I'll turn off the ozone and turn it back on as it plays through so you can hear kind of what that's doing. A desperado, I'm more out west than life of Pablo Guess that's a push, but I'm going hard, cause that's the motto Your times are tough, even though I feel like I won the lot A lot of people messaging, acting like I'm some fortunato Fuck it, I'ma make this one for me and for my happiness Trust that I'ma add you to the team, if you're the nastiest I'm focused on my craft to feed my son the mac and cheesiest I'm proud to be the guy that makes this shit look like the easiest Now, if you're not listening on really nice speakers or in headphones You're probably not going to hear a ton of difference But we have a little bit of gain reduction in the high and a little bit of boost in the 1 to 3k range and everything else is basically level the power that this ozone brings is you've got a great eq but then you also have an imager currently this imager is turned off uh but if i turn it back on we'll play with you've got a width and a stereo a stereo wise you gotta be very careful with that stereo eyes. It's really easy to go crazy with it. Over here you have your vector scope where you can like, you can just look at the width and what's happening to the overall sound. Um, and then you have either a sine wave. Overall kind of dynamic wave that moves as it's going. And then here you have a maximizer, which is basically a very fancy word for a limiter. Here you can see we have a threshold, we have a ceiling, and we have true peak and the speed of it. But like I said, it's basically a limiter. So that's also what makes it perfect for mastering because it's not only a an EQ and a stereoizer slash imager it also has a limiter attached now i generally still use another limiter but i like to do hard a, a relatively hard cut with this maximizer dropping it about anywhere from one to two db uh from zero and then going in with the limiter afterwards to make that as flat close to zero as possible so yeah you've got the fast slow you have your transients and your sustain I don't notice a huge difference in this. I do hear a little bit of difference if you use the transient emphasis, but this song is punchy enough. We really don't need that. So for me, it would be, if you need these things, you should probably go back into your overall mix and figure out how to bring out the transients without using this tool. Then on the side here, you have your uh, bypass, gain match, mono, so that way you can just take the left and right squash it so that way you can hear what it'll sound like on most speakers and then swap where you flip the left and right channels one of the things that makes this plugin really awesome is this master assistant so we're gonna stay here on the same thing but you click on it and basically this is one of the first AI plugins that I've ever seen it uses AI or AI to read the song as you're playing it, you set it for either streaming or CD. 99% of the time you're gonna go streaming and you set it for intensity. We obviously want high intensity. You hit next and it'll say waiting for you to play audio. So let's play it some audio. And as you can see, it changed a little bit of the EQ. It completely got rid of the imager again, and it it was playing around with the threshold a little bit here too, but it doesn't seem like much has changed in anything else. Um, and yeah, so I really like doing that and then going into the EQ, listening and changing. Now, a little tip, if you are a person who gets this plugin and you decide you want to use the master assistant, uh, make sure that you're putting it in the most, in the loudest part of your song, or at least the part where the most stuff is going on. 
If you do that, you ensure that you're now providing an EQ or a, a general mix for the entirety of the frequency range slash the entirety of the transient range of your entire song. It's just a good practice to get into anyway for the mastering side and I definitely 100% use this plugin for my overall master at the end. So just a great EQ, great all around plugin, but fantastic for mastering and for just finishing off a project. Now for the last two plugins that we have here, we're in a completely different song. This is the song Way from my previous album, came out last year called Horizon. If you like what you hear, be sure to check out my music. I'll have a link down in the description below so that way you can just click on that and it'll bring you to my entire catalog. You can listen to all of the amazing music I've put out in the past, God, almost four years now. So the next one we're gonna look at is called Tape Echo. And now this is another Pro Tools kind of exclusive. I think it's really, really good. I don't know if they run third party it's pro it's avid so you just never know they're like the apple of the music world where it's like we don't care what you want you do it our way or get lost so there's a lot of stuff packed in this um but it's also relatively simple so i have it here on the verse on the first verse and we're just gonna play through now i do want you to notice that i have a lot of other stuff on here but it's stuff that we just talked about so we've got melodyne we've got neutron 3 we've got the pro compressor i have a de-esser on here um and then i used uh neoverb by isotope is also really good but for me i tend to go for little plate over neoverb the nice part about neoverb is that it also has an EQ attached to it for the actual reverb. It can clear some things up if you have a little bit of a muddy sound, but I like simpler generally, so I normally go with Little Plate. All right, so here's the first verse without the tape echo. Back in the darkness, I could go. Don't need the light to help me grow. No, do this for me so I'll go slow Follow the sun but stay down low, yeah you All right, now, here's with it on Back in the darkness I could go Don't need the light to help me grow, no Do this for me so I'll go slow Follow the sun, but stay down low, yeah. Now, again, be sure that you're listening with headphones. You may miss the delay otherwise, because this delay is super subtle. You can see here on the mix tab, I have it set to two. It's very, very lightly mixed in. I have the feedback set to high. Feedback is basically going to be like how long does that delay come back. So if you have it shorter, it would be back, back. If you have it longer, it would go back, 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 back. The record level is low. Record level is basically how loud the delays sound. Back in the darkness, I could go. Don't need the light to help me grow. No. Do this for me. And then for the expanded delay, you can turn that on. I generally keep that off. If you're trying to go for a crazy long delay anyway, uh, tape hiss is sometimes cool if you're doing like a lo-fi type sound mix. Head tilt and wow flutter. Wish I could tell you exactly what those did. I don't use them. So you also have your input and your output. Those generally stay zero with me because I've already done my, my gain reduction slash maximizing my gain. But then here is the is the most important part. So this is basically your spacing between when you said the word or the syllable or strum the guitar to when the delay comes. So the farther out, the more time between the delay happens. Like this. Back in the darkness I could go. Or closer. Back in the darkness I could go. 
Don't need the light to help me grow, no And then it has a sync mode which I really like I really like it So if you have it set, I have it set here to 97 You can basically pick what type of note you want that delay to be and it will move that delay over to the spot here on this band uh, to fit that so here we're on back in the darkness I could go so I basically have it on eighth notes let's just say eighth note you see it didn't change all that much back in the darkness I could go what if I wanted it to don't need the light to help me grow, no. That's basically this plugin in a nutshell. It's a little less simple, but it's basically simple for what you're what you'll use it. I'll tell you just right off the bat. I only use the feedback, record level, mix, and then the overall uh, actual delay band. That's basically all I use with this. So it would probably work the same for you. For the very, very last plugin, it's probably my favorite creative plugin to use. It's by Isotope and it's called Vocal Synth 2. If you listen to any of my songs from Horizon, I don't think there's a single song where I don't use Vocal Synth. And basically, I use it to turn my voice into an instrument. I would have to pull up the Ableton file, but basically here, uh, the beginning of the song starts with this. And that's just vocal synth. That's just me going da 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 with a little echo boy on there, which is, that's a delay by Sound Toys, which is, again, phenomenal. Um, but I do have some vocal synth to on this final chorusy section, and right at this point in the song, we go through what I call a portal, which is basically where you take the beginning of the song, you keep it going, but you completely change it, but keep it in the same element. So uh, this is the point where the song sounds like this. Wait. Oh yeah. Okay, now there's a lot of automation and stuff going on here, so I'm going to try and turn that stuff off, but the main focus that we're going to have is this vocal synth too, so let me solo this ending out. And it sounds like this without the vocal synth. We ah 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 to the world I'm on my yeah 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 you yeah. to the world I'm on my ah uh, yeah. Okay, now here's what it sounds like with the vocal synth. We ah 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 to the world I'm on my yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. to the world I'm on my. Ah, uh, get to the world I'm on my. And now this is a relatively light one. Uh, you can see that it's generally off, and then every once in a while it'll turn on. That's because I was using automation with it. But it basically turns. If I can put it onto this and hit record, it it basically. Turns your voice into a synth. Which is exactly, you know, what I'm looking for. But also, you can use it in context, right? Like, so here, it's not turning my voice into a synth. It just sounds, like, messed up and kind of funky. So here's what it sounds like with everything on it. We are, ah, 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 to the world I'm on my, yeah, 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 yeah. To the world I'm on my, Ah, uh, get to the world I'm on my. So it basically distorts it. It it adds uh, extra sounds. It messes with the actual tonality. 
So let's talk about this plugin. I, I know this is gonna be a longer video. This is a massive plugin to really jump into. So maybe I'll just do a dedicated uh, breakdown of this, but just to give you a very quick look, we've got a BioVox, a Vocoder, a CompuVox, a TalkBox, a PolyVox, and you just turn them on or turn them off. You have individual dials that all do different things. They each have their own mix level, which is really cool. Here in the middle, you have your overall pitch. This is basically what frequency you want most affected. So I have it on high because that's what I want most affected there. I want that to be the higher frequencies and I want the mids and the lows to be more natural. You can set the key. I've done that here. So the, here's a little bit of audio correction. Here you can basically like see, it's like a visualizer for the most part. Uh, you can see what is happening tonality wise. And then these individual things are basically the level faders for the mix. Uh, but they're all set to 100. Here's your overall mix level. You have a gate on here. I love the gate because, especially using a condenser mic with this, you hear a lot of pops and clicks and just general air. So if you turn that up to about like negative 40, maybe like negative 45, you'll cut out basically everything except for your voice going into it. So I like it for that. You have a general output. You can see I'm peaking a little bit, but who cares? And then here you have basically added modulation. So you have a distortion, which this distortion is actually really good. You have a filter, you have a transform, a shred, a chorus that's halfway decent, a delay that's really good, phenomenal, and then a ring mod, which I never ever use, but it's really cool. You can get some cool sounds out of that. It does come with lots of presets. Yay, presets. I like to go through the presets because there's a lot that you can change here and affect that I just prefer to go through the presets, find one that I like, and then mess with it from there. If you don't find one that you like, then you can always just come back in and start from scratch. But that is kind of the way that I operate in this plugin. So those were my top nine plugins. Again, I use plenty of other ones as you probably saw in this video, but these are, once again, these are my staples. These are the ones that I use all the time. I know this is a longer video, so I really appreciate you all watching all the way through. If you got any sort of value out of this, please be sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and make sure that those bell notifications are turned on so that way you're notified every single Monday when we come out with a new video. If you have anything that you want me to cover in future videos, please leave them in the comments below or just leave a really nice note or comment telling me that you like what I'm doing. It really goes a long way for me and I would deeply appreciate it. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much and I will see you next week. See ya.